Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about the biggest, most number one radio controlled boat mistake that's being made. And the whole goal is to slow that down, reverse it, and hopefully if you're watching this video, you will know exactly what to do so that you don't fall into the same trap. So let's talk about that mistake that's being made. You might be thinking that it's in terms of actually driving that boat. Well, it's not in terms of driving the boat we're not worried about if you go and beach your boat on a big pile of sand no we're actually talking about when you're building your radio control boat or maybe you have your radio control boat and you're wishing to go and upgrade it through that process of either upgrading or building your own radio control boat this is what leaves you susceptible to making this mistake now the mistake made is specific to the motor that you have to select for the boat and it's not to do with the size the physical size in order for that motor to put out enough power it actually comes from the specific KV that needs to be selected in order to make radio control boats efficient and work correctly now if you've watched some of the videos that we have on the channel before we outlined this in a complete video where I go through the process to select a power system for your specific radio control boat and if you haven't seen that video already I will leave a link in the description below so that you're able to go watch that and get all the information from that specific part of the video. Do note that the link in the description below to help with the power system selection for radio control boats is for fast electric radio control boats that utilize a surface piercing propeller. This will not work the same for boats that have a fully submerged drive. What seems to happen is you're looking for that brushless motor to use in your radio control boat. You find a bunch of motors available online and it says that the motor is a certain KV and the motor can handle up to, let's say, four cells of lithium polymer battery placed in series. And it probably can handle those four cells in series. The difference is it does not work for a radio control boats. Radio control boats require that the total RPM is within a very tight range of operation and the reason behind this is because the propellers that we use are going to load up that radio control boat to the point where if you're trying to spin too much rpm you're going to pull too much power for your power system and this is going to lead to the problems that end up allowing you to blow out that motor very very easily this channel is all about preventing that so that's why i'm going to be leaving that link in the description below so that you can go and visit the video video where we get into very good amounts of detail. Generally you will find that the range between about 22,000 RPM to 33,000 RPM, this is the total RPM as it would be unloaded, is going to be very good for radio control boats. If you're new to radio control boats, I would recommend staying on the low end of that range. And in addition to that, if you're running a boat that is more of the slower style haul, this is the mono haul style, you will also want to be on the lower end of that range. If the boat that you have is of a hydro style those boats obviously needing more experience to operate and set them up those will have motors that will be able to handle the higher amounts of RPM and use them more efficiently not leading to blown up components but nonetheless the issue can still happen regardless of the boat that you're selecting so that's why it's important to make certain that you select the right KV that is within the right range for the total RPM that you're going to run in that particular boat. Now that we've talked about the motor that you have to select, it doesn't just end there. Once you do select a motor that has the perfect KV value for the cell count that you wish to run in your radio control boat, the next thing is to install it and then run that radio control boat out on the water. You don't want to run that radio control boat for the entire duration of the battery. What you want to do instead is only run it for a certain specific amount of time. Let's call it 30 seconds. You define the time that you're going to run your boat, then you're going to bring it back in and you're going to check the temperatures of all of your components. What you're trying to do is prevent 
a complete failure of your power system if something were to go wrong or you didn't select your power system correctly. What you're going to identify is within 30 seconds of operating that radio control boat, if you see excessive heat, that is a clear indication that there's something wrong with your setup and something must be changed. If you did not utilize the 30 to 60 second rule of checking your temperatures after that specific amount of runtime and you ran your radio control boat for more or less the better part of a battery, you may find when you bring your boat back in that you have permanently damaged one of the components on your radio control boat. And that permanent damage will never allow you to access the full potential of power. And furthermore, it may lead to quicker destruction of your components next time you run that boat. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope this video gives you a good bit of information to avoid the mistake that many have made in the past and many continue to make in the radio control boating hobby. Keep in mind, KV, cell count, the multiplication of those together gets you that unloaded RPM that we're talking about and that has to fit in the range that is usable for radio control boats as we see fit. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.